Hey guys, welcome back. This is Scott and what I'm going to do this week is something a little bit different. I'm going to call this my Lyft newsletter, the video version. This is number 20. So we've done 19 newsletters prior to this, all about Steve Reeves, Muscle Beach, Golden Vibes, and you know, really interesting stories of people who knew Steve, uh, et cetera, and so on. So welcome back. Hope you're doing great. First thing I want to address is the community tab. So I posted this photo this morning and uh, I thought yesterday was just a glitch. And I'm going to get into yesterday's photo here in a second. So this photo came, I posted it on my YouTube community page and looking through the comments here, I can see Karanu says, would never have thought Churchill was a fan. So maybe Carano could just read the text, but couldn't see the photo. I'm not sure. Here's the photo. It's from a Joe Weider, Mr. America magazine. I love the, the way the colors pop. That's really, really awesome. And then uh, just I have some pages from the same magazine. So that's what I posted this morning. And then let's look at some other comments. We got Eric, my buddy, Eric Moore, 5408. Awesome, Scott. It's a eulogy to a blank page, LOL. The next one is from Troy Richard, 6752. He says Arnold Schwarzenegger sabotaged it. Well, Arnold may have sabotaged it. You never know. Joe Toth, 5465. Scott, something wrong with the page. It's just buffering. And then Charles Howell, 3583. Still waiting. No photos. All right, well, let's jump over to yesterday. Here's the photo that I shared yesterday. And as far as I can tell, this is just the second time this has happened. So you guys could not see this photo, and then you couldn't see the photo I just showed from the Mr. America magazine. Well, here's the photo from yesterday. Look at that. This is a photo made from the original negative, and then I put, I love the vintage look. What do you think? By Russ Warner, and this was taken in the Oakland Hills uh, in California. And let's look at some funny comments here. I bet you Eric's in here somewhere. The invisible bodybuilder. Can't see it unless it's my phone. I can't see the picture. Same here. The invisible man or bodybuilder. Well, you guys are awesome. I can always depend on you guys for a chuckle. And then Hey, it's Mort, 7744 says, you're just getting a permanent loading icon. Same. Yes, bizarre. Me too. Not showing on my Android. Same. Also on Android. I can see it on my desktop, I said. Anyone else? And then Panathatube says, I can't see a thing. So I don't know what's going on. I am posting the same way that I always do. Uh, I don't, I know a lot of you guys probably are not on Instagram, but I do post that same picture on Instagram most of the time and Twitter. So I'm going to, when I'm done with the video here, I'm going to find out Google and see if there is an issue with, uh, the YouTube community, but I'm doing the same thing that I always have. I wouldn't even know how, uh, to fix this. Anyway, I appreciate you guys joining me on this community and, uh, throwing in your comments and letting me know what a good job I'm doing or what a bad job I'm doing. It doesn't matter. We're keeping Steve Reeves at the forefront, and that's the main thing. All right, let's jump into the next segment. All right, so in the next segment, we are going to talk about Steve Reeves' music. And I had a question from Jimbo on Instagram. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of younger guys and girls on Instagram who are learning about Steve Reeves. That's one of the things I love about Instagram. You know, it's photo based, it's video based. And so if your posts are getting a lot of traction, you can really discover or be discovered by a whole new audience. And, you know, this is about Steve Reeves. Obviously, it's not about me. But I get questions from the younger generation a lot about Steve Reeves, because once they discover Steve and they see his physique and they learn about what kind of person he was, bam, typically we've got another fan. And that's that's the point of this is to just keep Steve at the forefront and let people know what an amazing bodybuilder, businessman and you know athlete that he was. So Jimbo asks, did Steve ever say what music he liked? I know he was quite private, but
but it's always been a small question on the mind. And the answer is yes. Uh, I can answer that for you. This was written about in, I believe, A Moment in Time, the George Helmer book on Steve Reeves. And then also I did a video um, in which I am in Steve's 1976 JAG, and I pulled out three eight-track tapes. You can Google eight-track tape if you're not sure what that is. And I just happen to have them right here. Let's see. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. I got my virtual background on. Ah, there we go. That looks pretty clear. So the first eight track is Music Express, 20 original hits and original stars. And if you're interested, you could probably go on Spotify, and I've actually done this myself, and you can look up some of these uh, playlists. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to get that glare off. All right, so on this uh, eight track, The Captain and Tennille, these are from the 70s, Frankie Valley, Casey and the Sunshine Band, Elton John, Harry Chapin, Barry Manilow, Phoebe Snow, The Ritchie Family, David Geddes, Austin Roberts, The Ozark Mountain Daredevils, Mike Post, Jigsaw, Sammy Johns with Chevy Van, Disco Tex and the Sex Olets, Get Dancing, the Doobie Brothers, Frankie Valley, and Tony Camilo Bazooka, and Johnny Walkalin from 1975. KTEL, Music Express. So he was definitely listening to music of the time from 1975. Steve bought the Jag in 1977, so this was somewhat of a new 8-track, and this was Steve's personal 8-track. The next of the three is Diana Ross and the Supremes. Uh, my World is Empty Without You, Love is Like an Itching in My Heart. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you could do the same thing on Spotify. You could go and type in Diana Ross and the Supremes. Volume two. So there you go. Steve had very varied tastes. Before you show the next and last eight track, I know he liked like marching band type music. Uh, I don't remember where I read that. And I do remember there was a certain artist and I, I do have that artist bookmarked. And I'll look another time and let you know. The last one is was one of my is one of my favorites. Also, Olivia Newton, John. Um, Greatest Hits, definitely from 1977. So that was the same year he bought the Jag, May 1977. You never know. This might have been the first eight track he bought. If not for you, come on over. Let me be there. Have you never been mellow? I had the biggest crush on Olivia Newton-John back in that era, especially when she did Grease. All right. Well, I hope that answers your question, Jimbo. I appreciate it. On to the next segment. Okay, and just to wrap up the music segment, uh, in a recent conversation with Sandra, Steve's first wife, uh, she had mentioned to me that the only music she paid attention to when she and Steve were married was the Dave Brubeck Quartet. So you can find that on Spotify. That's what you're looking at right here. And you can hear what they were listening to and dancing to back when they were married. All right, so in the next segment, I want to talk about power walking for a minute. These were actually Steve's uh, power walking dumbbells. I don't know if he used these personally, but they were in his collection, so I'm assuming that he did. Uh, I, have one, I have one in my hand, and then I have another one here on the floor. But uh, power walking dumbbells that I believe were made in partnership with Ivanko. And I have a friend here on that I've been talking to um, via email who lives in the same neighborhood as the spouse of the the man who founded Ivanko and this friend who I met online and he and I have been talking about bodybuilding and Steve Reeves and the golden era and all that uh, was going to interview her and get some information on, you know, Steve Reeves, Ivanko, etc. I haven't heard back, so I'm hoping to, you know, interview my friend and and see what he has found out. But these are adjustable. I believe these weigh three pounds. They have a nice foam handle, 
And on the end, it says Steve Reeves weights, handy weights. And these are adjustable. So this comes out. I have done a video on these on my YouTube channel. So you can check that out if you're interested. I'm not going to do it right now because I will probably make a mess. And then you can take off, I believe these are quarter pound discs. So one pound would be four. So that'd be two pounds. I got four on each side. And then I think the handle weighs one. It's three pounds in each hand. My point is I've been doing power walking uh, on a regular basis, not every day, but I, I do like to mix up my cardio. And I've been using these dumbbells as part of my power walking. And I've been trying the three pounders and it is hard. Uh, what makes it hard is that pendulum action, the swinging of the arms, and then trying to go forward, you know, and then focus on breathing. It's challenging and it's fun to try to meet that challenge. So I found that I have to work up to these. These are a little bit too heavy because my hips, as I'm moving forward, walking in the power walking form, uh i'm i'm getting a little bit off balance and so i want to continue to do this and improve uh, i also have been wearing a 14 pound vest the 14 pound vest is actually easier and i'm not holding any dumbbells in my hands when i'm doing power walking with the 14 pound vest and of course steve used a vest as well which i have in my collection i'll show you at some point uh, but the vests have come a long way since the vest he had was probably from the 80s, maybe the late 70s. I'm not sure. I'm using a Rogue Fitness vest, which is just, you know, really comfortable. Uh, the dumbbells are actually harder than the 14-pound vest. So a three-pound dumbbell in each hand, that's six pounds, versus a 14-pound weighted vest. The dumbbells are harder. Uh, if Steve was using these three-pound dumbbells, you know, and ankle weights and a vest, my gosh, that would have been extremely challenging. But he was walking very quickly and uh, was trying to, you know, walk a mile, mile and a half, maybe two miles. If you don't have the book, you can find it on eBay from time to time. I believe there is a Kindle version. Get clear. <laughs> I believe there's a Kindle version as well. Highly recommended. Um, forward in here talks about James Michener and without James Michener without James Michener's encouragement this book would have never been written Robert Vavra also is mentioned and the way I remember uh, James Michener being mentioned is that Steve was at a party and he was talking about writing a book and James Michener and perhaps Robert Vavra challenged Steve to just write a page a day and he did and so that's how we got power walking highly recommended great book great information insight on Steve all right so that is the segment on power walking let's go to the next segment okay so in this last segment I want to share with you some Vic Tanny memorabilia that uh, Eric Moore sent to me just today these are cards personal effects owned by Vic Tanny so you have the courtesies of the police department are extended to Vic Tanny, Miami Beach, Florida. I don't know the year of that, but it has to be fairly old. Here is a uh, oil company card, I guess a gas card, gold card, Union 76 for Mr. Victor Tanny since 1952. Here's a Mercurio restaurant card, a charge card for Vic Tanny. And this was located in New York City. And then here is a Automobile Club of Southern California. This was issued to Patricia Louise. This is Vic Tanny's ex-wife. And this is who Eric received the memorabilia from. Here is a photo of Vic Tanny, in case you don't know who Vic was. At one point, he was referred to as the Jim King of America. Here's a shot of Mercurio Restaurant located in New York City. This is where Vic used the card that I just showed you to charge meals. Here is a magazine cover of Muscle Builder with Vic Tanny on the cover. And lastly, this is unrelated to the Vic Tanny memorabilia that Eric Moore got from Vic's ex-wife, Patricia. 
But since I just posted that Mr. America cover on my YouTube community today and my Instagram page today, at Steve Reeves Hercules is the Instagram page. Eric saw that and he sent me this. He has an autographed picture. This was one of the pages out of that magazine, Mr. America, Joe Weider's magazine. And it's signed by Jane Mansfield. And I can't make out. It looks like it's made out to jock. So there you go. Just a little extra bonus material. Well, that wraps it up for this video. Thank you, Eric, for sharing that with us. We appreciate it. It's fascinating. And this is my video version of Lyft, which has been a newsletter. If you like the video version better, let me know and maybe I'll switch it up and just do a video version. I do like to write. I have enjoyed doing the other style newsletter where it is written. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. I appreciate it. And I will